Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, a nature and wildlife photographer based in Northern California. And today it's about midday. It's like 1.30 in the afternoon on a 75 degree November 1st day. So can't complain there, but it's not like my ideal time for shooting nature photography where I like to focus on the morning and the afternoon. Now, one thing I've gotten into with uh, this type of day, which I've kind of gotten pushed into shooting more often because I have two young kids now, is infrared photography. And so that's what I wanted to do today is break out the Hoya R72 filter and under $100, sometimes even under $50 filter that you can get depending on the focal, uh, the filter thread on your lens. But it's a really cheap way to get into infrared photography. And today I wanted to break that out and do a little bit of photography in the San Jose region. So that's what we'll be doing today. So for this composition, there are a couple things that I like and that picked up my attention immediately. One is even in the visual spectrum, or especially in the visual spectrum, you can see the uh, salt pan here and the, the contrasting color here of the white of the salt pan with the kind of slate blue of the water reflecting the sun and uh, the sky really. And then these kind of like traces of salt pan of salt rather in the salt pan. So I like that. The other is this dike that runs along the way and is kind of a nice leading line, though it doesn't really lead to much. It leads off into the distance into the sky. Can you see me? I know it's a little bit weird, but I've always wondered what a flower looks like in infrared. So here's this like random California poppy that survived throughout the entire summer and into the fall. So I'm going to go get my camera out and take a picture of this. Even though I stopped here for this poppy, there's, um, there's kind of a neat composition here that I'm going to go ahead and take. So this is an example of something that's kind of mundane in visual light, but actually looks really cool in infrared. So check it out. So behind me here, you've got the bike path, which is a paved asphalt. And then it snakes. You have a nice little S curve into the hillside there with the clouds above. Now in you know, this video here, this is kind of like whatever, not that great a composition, kind of nice with the with the black path, uh, the black top, but not otherwise that interesting. In infrared, it's kind of cool because the sky will look black, the black top will still probably look black, and then the foliage will actually look quite bright white. And so you'll have this contrast of the white foliage with the sneaking line into the, the dark sky which is a pretty cool composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that same settings as before, nothing changes uh, really that much because you know, at this point in the day, the light is the light and uh, it's not really that situationally dependent. Well, as I set up this next shot, um, cooler without the helmet? I think maybe. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, why infrared photography is challenging. So with um, infrared photography, you have really two pathways that you can go. The first pathway is to convert your camera. Maybe that should be the second pathway. The first pathway is to put a filter onto the end of your camera. Now this filter, Okay, so this filter is just like an ND filter or a polarizing filter that you might use, you know, to alter your image in some way, to polarize light or to increase the exposure uh, time or something like that. So it's just a screw-on filter. Hoya makes perhaps the best version of this. It's called the R72. Let me adjust the light for a second. That's pretty, that's better. Speaking of filters, probably need an ND filter. All right, so... Hoya makes what I would say is probably the best version of this. It's called the R72 filter. You know, they go for like $50, $75, depending on the filter thread. I have two of them. I have one that fits the RF 
uh, 35F 1.8 lens. That's a uh, 52 millimeter filter thread, I think. And then I've got this one, which is the 77. Um, and uh, this fits the, fits the RF 14-35, uh, among other popular uh, large lenses. So you screw this on. Now, what is that doing? Well, it's reducing light that comes through the lens or comes through the filter and then lens and then to the sensor. It's reducing that light to just the light that's 720 nanometers and beyond. Now, we could go through the silly history lesson or science lesson here, but just trust me basically to say that that's going to be light that generally is not light that we would see with our eyes. Now, some of the light that we see with our eyes gets through because it's just a filter and it's not perfect, but 99 or something like that percent of the light that gets through is going to be out of the visual spectrum. Now, practically what that means is very little light that we can see is getting to the EVF and the sensor. So when you look through the camera, it's going to look really dark. All your shutter, all your aperture, your high, high ISO values, all that stuff is going to be fairly consistent with what you would experience with shooting in very dark conditions. Think like after sunset, twilight, basically pushing midnight in the middle of the of the night somewhere where it's not you know daytime all night so um, your exposure settings have to adjust to that so for this photography that i'm doing today i'm shooting very high iso 12,800 or, so, or so i'm shooting wide open as possible f4 and i'm shooting um, long shutter speeds of like one fifth or one fourth of a second this is why choosing a lens with with a wider aperture is nice because you can afford to do a shorter a shorter shutter speed or a lower ISO or both and get a better image maybe freeze the scene a little bit better maybe get a lower ISO that has less green or less noise in your image but um, that's going to depend on which lenses perform well in the infrared spectrum and there are a couple great lists that I'll list in the in the bottom of the, the description here that you can then reference if you want to and you want to understand which one of your lenses or which lens might perform well in this situation. It is not about the quality of the lens. It's about the way it's built and um, whether it has like infrared assistant, assisting uh, elements within the lens to focus um, you know, that we would never have thought about, um, but are built into the lenses to help performance in, in lower light conditions. So um, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting lens. Like for example, my, my RF 100 to 500 has a bright hotspot, doesn't perform very well. This lens performs really well. So you never really know um, what, what lenses can perform well. So it's worth consulting and understanding that. But if you do see a very bright white, kind of like circle or a very heavy vignette is what it might look like also to your eye. That would be a, um, an issue with hot spots and would be something you want to adjust the, the lens that you get. If you do convert your camera, this is the other option, it does re eliminate any of those issues. So converting your camera means someone, probably not you, is going to open up your camera and remove the high pass filter. Um, which is built into the camera uh, on the sensor. And when you remove that filter, what it does is it allows all light to enter this, this camera from all the full spectrum, the entire spectrum of, of visible energy and beyond. So infrared and microwave and all of those things will now hit your sensor. So what you then do is you then put additional filters on determining how you want um, what light you want to enter the sensor. So if you wanted to shoot a 720 nanometer scene, you'd put that filter on, but your camera now is able to do it in a way where it gets much more light from uh, the sensor and it, it, to the sensor. And the effect of that is to say that when you have a full spectrum camera, you're able to shoot um, with faster shutter speeds, lower ISO, and you don't have to deal with the hotspot issues, I think. I don't have one, so I might be wrong on the hotspot issue, but anyway, uh, it's expensive and you have to do it and it's permanent. So, you know, only if you're really into IR should you do that. But if you're like me, you want the cheap option. It comes with some caveats, but those caveats are made a lot easier with modern mirrorless cameras because modern mirrorless cameras allow us to look through the EVF and see the scene and focus on whatever we want using autofocus in these cameras and um, expose, the, expose the image all visually like we do it did any normal shot. And for folks that have gotten into infrared photography, 
after the advent of mirrorless cameras, you may not appreciate how much of a sea change that is. Because the way we used to have to do it is you always had to have a tripod, you had to set up your camera, you had to screw the filter off, focus the image, expose it properly. You had to use a different scale, by the way, to focus the image, because back then it wasn't doing focusing on the sensor, it was doing focusing through a separate autofocus mechanism, and the scale and the infrared is different than the visual, and it was a real pain in the butt. So if you look at really old lenses, like for example, I had the Canon, I think it was the uh, EF, 24 to 105. It had two scales for focusing. It had that little window, do you remember? And you'd look in the window and you'd have a red one and a white one. And the white one was visual and the red was for focusing in the infrared. So anyway, all that annoying stuff that you used to have to deal with is gone. And now we can just look through and take a shot. And speaking of taking a shot, I'm seeing some pretty cool compositions here that I'm going to go ahead and take. And um, with that, I'll end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something if you didn't know all this stuff already. And I hope you enjoyed the images because I always enjoy shooting in infrared. It's a lot of fun. I love the black and white images. They look just like something a little bit special. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming along today. And if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel and like the video because that's what we hope everyone will do on YouTube so that our videos are seen by folks. So be well, take care, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.